Hello everyone and welcome back to a little LS7 update. It's been very interesting to read people's comments and see people's thoughts on the video that we had. Isaac and I had a sit down discussion and we'd like to talk about some of the comments that you guys left and our thoughts towards them. We really appreciate your insights and ideas. This will be a longer format video coming out a little later, but here's a shorter excerpt with just the comments so you can see the direction that we're thinking about going in. Thanks again for all your thoughts and let's get to the video. Supercharging LSX. And so that, you know, that would be a way to keep that NA feel that I like with the instant throttle response and high torque at all situations without right. needing seven liters and $15,000 worth of motor. Right, it would it would allow you to basically take an LS3 or similar 6.2 and get power levels and throttle response similar to what you're getting with an LS7 platform, but without some of the costs associated there and to potentially expand that further in the future. I think that I really like driving hard on track. And I think as a whole, it is much more difficult to make a supercharged car handle track work in high temperatures consistently. Thermal management definitely becomes an issue. Although with the turbo motor, you're still dealing with yep. some of that. But I think in general, forced induction requires more to manage when you're pushing it really hard for long durations. Just an LSX 427, build ourselves out a seven liter motor. Cool, I think it's probably gonna cost a lot of money to buy a bare block and start from scratch. Probably a similar amount of money to buying an LS7. I think your end result there is is around the same as an LS7. I think, you know, we may be able to optimize in some very specific aspects, but you'd be within a few single digit percentage points of how much you could feel the difference. Hyper over square, flat plane, do it, three exclamation points. <laughs> I love the idea as well. Like thinking about, it was one of the first things I thought about doing was like, maybe not the flat plane, but the high revving, crazy, turn it into a GT3 made by made by Chevrolet. A tractor GT3. Unfortunately, to make that high revving motor a good motor it has to from scratch start as that being the goal and i think that unfortunately the ls platform just does not lend itself to being high revving and reliable and making a ton of power got someone saying five three swap <laughs> Which would be funny. It would certainly be affordable. Why not just go 4.8 iron block, <laughs> slap a big turbo on that boy? It would be an affordable way to do it. I think that diving down the iron block rabbit hole is not something that I think would match the character of the car particularly well. I think the car weighs 3,000 pounds flat right now. I think you want to keep that weight distribution and really get the most out of the fact that they've done so much to lightweight that vehicle. Yeah, yeah. I would hate to have carbon fenders and then an iron block get a 441 or 540 cubic inch motor don't know anything about those i don't know i don't know much about them either and i think that having a 7.8 or whatever that is liters is also interesting. It might just turn up some of the aspects that we don't love as much. Yeah, I think it's also important for some of these motors to keep in mind that having an off the shelf block and general parts for something that you're going to be tracking a lot is pretty important because we will break things down the line. So having a really bespoke, expensive initial engine platform for something that you're gonna beat on on track for long sessions is worth taking into consideration. Another person saying D-stroked LS7, 8,500 RPMs is what's needed. I think there's some room for if we build an LS7, we have a little bit more airflow, we have a little bit better of a valve train design. There's room for raising that red line slightly and pushing the motor a little bit harder, especially if we're keeping timing very conservative and tuning it so that it's not being pushed to its limit up top, yep. that we could get some of that out of it. Build you a high compression LS3 uh, and get the power of a stock LS7 without the price tag and upgraded parts. If a million horsepower isn't your thing, stock LS3 with a cam and headers will make LS7 power and be dead reliable all day long. I think this option is really interesting to me. Definitely. I think it seems like you could go with this for a much lower price tag and get really high quality components that don't necessarily use some of the exotic materials that an LS7 uses. And I think the end result is a pretty similar power band. There would be a definite savings to going that direction. I mean, I have two concerns. One of them is the down the road resale if I do choose to sell the car. And I wonder how the optics of an LS3 in a Z06 devalues the package. Do you think that uh, when you resell the car and it has 100,000 track miles and a cage, that is going to devalue the car at all? I'm not saying I've created a, a peach of a garage queen here, <laughs> only driven in the sun. I drove this car with cup twos last winter on it through the salt. Anyways. <laughs> Moving on. No matter how many miles you have in the engine, get the heads changed out and be done. Anyone who's driven an LS7 would not be happy with an LS3. 
which is the second point in my mind, minus besides the resale aspect, is I wonder if the sound and the feel of the LS7 is noticeably different from a built LS3. Like, I, I wonder if there's some sauce that is there. I think definitely going from an LS7 to a stock LS3. Yeah, you, that'd be sad. There'd be a pretty significant difference there. But being able to make a lot of choices on your LS3 build to, to bring it as close to an LS7 or even past that, I think it's possible that you'd be able to achieve something pretty similar. You know, it's fun to say you're part of the LS7 club, but it's an expensive ticket. It's an expensive motor itself. It's expensive to modify. It's expensive to fix as we're learning. To lastly mention, we sent out a poll, which I was asking stock LS7 versus stock LS3 versus turbo LS versus built LSX. And 80% of the vote was for stock LS7. I think the, the LS7 as a platform is held on a pedestal by enthusiasts much more than a built LS3 is, even if it was a very well-built LS3. I think the LS7 is seen as a special motor that only got put in two cars ever. They have just something special about them that is hard to match. And I, I, I agree with you guys that while I owned the car, well, I still own it, but while the car was moving under its own power, it did feel like something that was really special.